of speaking. Um, hi, everybody. How are you doing? Good. <laughs> so, um, when I was a child, I was living in, in a small village in, in the north of Spain. And then uh, it was kind of the summer festival. Um, and then in front of me, it was the girl that I like. I was seven years old, and I said, hey, man, you should go to her and say, uh, do you want to dance with me? Imagine, I'm Spanish, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was super excited. It was really difficult, and, but what the hell, I did it. I said, let's go. And, and then I asked her, do you want to dance with me? This story is not really connected with the presentation, but at least you know a bit <laughs> about me and how crazy I am. So um, the presentation will be about, um, let's say, it's divided in different topics, but it's uh, what we are doing in Bewater Animation Studios, and especially what we did during the last year concerning Blender or using Blender, the software uh, at the studio. And then here on this um, screen, you can see uh, one of our last production that we did um, at TV series so in the young adult um, target, which is a combination of blood, uh, a bit of sex, and these things that we all like. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Carlos. I'm working as technical development supervisor or director in, in the studio. And I'm just a representation of a, a nice studio that is uh, somewhere there. So, and I would like to give you an introduction of the studio uh, because maybe some of you don't know. Well, we are a studio specialist in animation. We are working in any kind of uh, animation, um, let's say different type of uh, animation, but um, more specialist in producing TV series and feature film in between other things. We also do uh, video game cinematics, VR experience, uh, and so on. But basically, the, the business uh, model is more in the, <clears throat> in the service, not, uh, producing TV series and feature film for producers that I come into to the studio. And uh, I'm really proud to be part of this studio already from almost 12 years for multiple reasons. We are producing nice stuff, uh, mainly for kids, but also because we have uh, such a kind of different philosophy of living, which is really connected in some way with Blender, or we identify a lot with, with it because it's really wild and a little bit of um, freedom there. And before starting to deep into the, the presentation, um, being inspired by Dylan Sisson presenting the, the Pixar Renderman uh, talks, I will give two presents at the end of the talk to someone that can answer properly. Don't worry, it will be super easy. Um, <laughs> two, two questions that I will do at the end of the talk. So these are books that we produce in the studio. We are not selling those books or these books. So it's a piece of art that we prepare for the artist when we finish the production. Uh, both are, are books, and it's, um, we give a present to the artist and everything, everybody that was part of the production, also producer and some close friends, my wife and <laughs> many others. So um, yeah, just pay attention. So um, yeah, in Big Water Studios, um, we are mainly using, not mainly, but uh, let's say we are in a studio that is using Blender at least in the 90% of the different steps of the production. And 90% of the production that are coming to the studio, we use Blender nowadays. We switch from another uh, production industry software standard, <coughs> Maya. And, um, <laughs> Uh, and now we are super happy that we are using more and more Blender. So I, uh, we have prepared some uh, real jazz um, with a selection of some um, piece of animation that we did just with Blender. Wow. 
okay. You can imagine, more or less. <laughs> Maybe someone can help me for the next one with the sound. I would like to sing meanwhile, but I'm, I'm really bad. It's in Spanish, enjoy. <laughs> Maybe it's the speakers, they were, it's written there, speak. Just an inject, I guess, no microphone. No, but it's probably. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you a little bit. Hi, guys. Yeah, uh, telling you a little bit more about the, um, the use of Blender, and especially one of the topics of the talk is like the NPR, toon shading, third shading, uh, non-photorealistic rendering, um, stylized, so uh, whatever you uh, like for the, this kind of technique, is like um, producing 3D characters with 2D look. And then um, coming back to the first test things productions that we did in Beaver Studios. It was earlier than this because we were producing uh, Kony TV series with that kind of look. But some of the tests that we did with uh, another software <coughs> um, so uh, were in this direction of the real time with outline, the two sided and, and combining with um, uh, different um, illustration layers, which was inspired by the production that we did in 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 be water in in Colonia in Cologne in Cologne in in Germany because I didn't mention it before but in uh, be water studios we have kind of uh, and I say kind of because we have two studios on hold in Germany and in Montreal in Canada <clears throat> and we have another two studios uh, pretty active in Spain in Barcelona and Santa Cruz de Tenerife Tenerife in the Canary Islands so. Um, so, and with this kind of test that we did on this uh, image, we did also animation, but just for the slightest an image, um, you already see the formula that we are kind of taking for different multiple production. It's not only us, it's probably the, the wall uh, to produce this kind of product. So, um, if you do this kind of look, you can combine it with 3D with that look, or you can combine it with illustration, which is super great and powerful and artistically is another level, right? So, um, and we were lucky that in 2019, more or less, um, so um, some TV station producer um, clients, let's say, came to us with the premise of producing the TV series of Petson and Findus, Peterson and Findus, well known here in the north of Europe, especially in Germany. and. So the idea was kind of conservate the style that was produced before in the traditional 2D animation style because the two first TV series were done uh, frame by frame drawing. And then, uh, but giving a little bit of a fresh style on the, on the animation. So we thought, eh, let's, let's go for the, this kind of technique with the tune shading or NPR look 
and combining the layers, illustration and 3D, also 3D environments in, in some of the cases. And you see here is um, some years later, we have the same formula It's again the illustrations and the 3D character there where you can even see um, an error here on the ground, which is a shadow catcher limit of the plane. <laughs> so it's, it's the line here. But it's pretty cool to see that if, if I'm not telling you that, pff, could be an illustration, who knows? And then uh, another example of um, what we did there is here is like the ground is in 3D, is maybe visible, and then we have some kind of gradient of kind of transparency to the illustration on the background. And then just to mention is um, at, at that period, it was the first time that Blender used Oh, sorry, Bewater used Blender uh, in most of the steps of our production. We were doing some departments before, like modeling and so on, but in this production, we switch 100% to Blender, and what it means is we create from illustration, uh, modeling, and so on, the first steps, and compositing was done 100% in Blender in kind of automatic uh, compositing. That's a, one of the coolest and the strongest things of, of Blender. Um, so, and, and we were lucky that we were in that moment, right? It was in the moment where Blender decided to go to the LTS, LTS version, and then we had the long-term uh, support and at least something like security for the studios to um, considering the software more like in a professional way. It's not in a freelance artist way, it's a lot of people working there. Uh, so, uh, sorry, 2.8 and 2.83 when the LTS uh, came, it was um, like a light in the tunnel for us there. So, um, and then this is the final look depth that we um, got working on shading and uh, texturing not so much as you can see, but also uh, on the outlines. And uh, we were testing before, some years before, but in, uh, at this time we said, okay, let's go for something that can produce this series. So this is a combination of EV rendering, that EV, not the actual EV, um, with freestyle outlines, which has good and bad things. Like you can see, for example, on the shoes, it's vibrating a lot. The line there is kind of um, an issue. Um, and then also one of the worst things that the freestyle has is that it can't produce or draw the intersection line, which was a big issue for this kind of uh, rendering. Wow, look at that transition. <laughs> Amazing. Maybe it was done with Blender, I don't know, it came with, <laughs> <laughs> it came with uh, PowerPoint. So, um, and then it was the first time where we said, okay, that, let's develop something cool in shading. Let's try to do something nice because it's quite simple. We can do it in a simple way, it's just color and some kind of shadow. But um, someone recommend us, one guy called Antonio Torralba, which is written there, uh, to create the shading. And then I said, okay, let's go, let's go for it. Coming from Unity and another game, uh, NG is uh, doing another productions. Uh, uh, I was speaking with him and I, he was a freelance in, at that time. And then I said, this is my wish list. Th all of these topics are some wish that we have from years, but nobody did. Can you do something in that direction? And he said, let me try. And then this crazy man, <laughs> it's a genius. Um, he did every single um, feature that I asked for to him to produce. Like the, in this case, in, in this video, uh, we wanted to have the shadow independently, uh, independently from the light source or from the light. So the, the shadow of the hat is like not being produced by the light, it's being produced by the uh, proximity of the, of the hat, which was cool because Many times in these TV series, and it's also nowadays we are using also these kind of techniques, we don't have really light. We have just color on the background, and then that integrates well with the, with the 3D location. 
so and, and another feature that we asked for it was the possibility and it was kind of a joke it's like I, I said to him hey, it would be cool if we can do this uh, in shading so one of the cool things of the 2d animation when it's traditional is that you can draw erase and whatever you need um, on life right and in this case um, we asked for the possibility of painting light or shadow I'm not speaking about texture I'm painting light and shadow on the on the guy so um, he just prepared this um, workflow that is based on masking masks so um, as you see on the right it's uh, based on vertex color and is uh, considering the the red color like the addition of whatever is the property that you are painting light or shadow and it's the blue erasing or deleting or let's say doing the negative of that property on on the viewport and it's not only light and shadow I said to him also uh, let's do the rim light so the, the say there has always if we want of course uh, rim light but in some specific point of views by camera we would like to um, exaggerate a bit more the rim light or even be able to delete in some areas because uh, it's kind of giving some weird artifacts or problems there so or, or you see for example on the nose it's like you have some bulges there that are not really nice so the artist in the lighting stage can decide or the director or whoever is there uh, if they want more or less based on uh, these in this setting uh, these three properties um, and then um, yeah let, let's go for the production that we have on the cover ghost of the ruins which is a tv series we produce in a crazy schedule way uh, we produce really fast we were more than 120 people working there because we need to produce like 96 minutes in uh, nine months uh, and then it was again a production done 90 percent with uh, blender and and here uh, we have some um, reel of that production <laughs> You already noticed that it's quite similar in look, but quite different in the topic. No, uh, it's more like I said, it's like young adult uh, target, so it's quite different. And the idea uh, at the beginning was to produce something like, like in the book, like more in the anime style, um, being compared in some way with Arcane, which was in that moment super boiling, let's say, but with a little bit less millions and less people <laughs> and less years. So, um, and then how we produce this, because it's not only uh, let's paint some shadow and, and colors and uh, do some big nose on the characters. Um, it's also because we are really powerful in, in Be Water Studios in, in pipeline, in steps, in um, programming, um, development uh, in many ways. And, and sorry for this slide, it's less visual but it's also necessary sometimes. So we can divide this slide in two um, areas. Is the, the, top, um, the top side of the screen is the typical linear uh, pipeline workflow diagram where it's written, uh, we start with the scripts and we do the, the storyboard, 
uh, in Tumboom, but also we did a storyboarding in Blender, so we combined both um, in, in this production. Uh, later on, we do the breakdowns, we divide by assets, and we, we have the typical no, art, uh, as I said, modeling, rigging, and then it, it came to layout, blah, blah, blah. This is more like, it doesn't matter if it's Blender or another software, right? Uh, but here on the bottom side, we have kind of a map that we develop in, in B Water because we always we are always struggling with the different uh, profiles of the production and some of the profiles are not really technical. They don't understand about the pipeline steps, steps but um, still they are doing decisions on the how the things should be done. So just to have a reference and to have kind of a map plan like the underground uh, metro, uh, whatever. So we have prepared this that we call files flow FF uh, to understand where the files are coming from and where the files are going. So it's like the inputs and outputs of the different departments. So if you are in modeling and you publish the file in modeling, you know that if you are in, in location LC on the sets, you produce a JSON that is just text uh, where it's written every single piece of the location and you produce the messages that are linked in look dev to produce the shaders there. And then, um, yeah, you can just follow it in a cascade waterfall um, visibility. And then um, if you are wondering what happens in each department, and uh, you already see that it's not a secret, it's something that is visible for everybody. So, um, you can already follow the lines and the arrows. So, for example, and just to uh, illustrate something, some department here is like in layout, we produce a JSON, that the JSON goes to animation, the JSON is building the, the whole set location, again in animation, and that JSON is also going to lighting um, to rebuild again the the, um, the location, considering the edits of layout. So if we move some elements, objects, or whatever on it is uh, being uh, built in, the, in that way that layout left the location in light per shot. So we also do a cache in, in Alembic that we uh, imported uh, in animation to get a reference of the layout puppets. And then we do the play blast and, and, and export uh, of the camera in ABC, also in Alembic for animation, but you already see that the camera, it goes also to matte painting department as an input, it goes to lighting, and it's also going the camera in Alembic to compositing. So, so the next departments, whatever it is, also they, they get uh, updated the camera from layout, which is the department that is defined in the camera, at least in this production. So, um, Bored, right? <laughs> so, but we also prepare some simplification of this. Is in some way is the typical illustration that you can find with rabbits. Probably you saw online some uh, pipeline um, diagram or drawing illustration with the steps uh, with drawings. And just to mention again that we did everything in Blender, including the storyboard, even if it's not the, the uh, all the minutes in in. in in being in done in Blender, we use also uh, Tumboon uh, storyboard. Um, just a script um, writing the story uh, was not done in Blender, but I hope in the future it's also doable. <laughs> so, and, and in the, let's say, in the last uh, steps of the production, uh, we, yes, we use another software like Fusion for compositing for multiple reasons, but one of the reasons uh, was because we have already a uh, department set up using that software, and because we need to uh, speed up and um, producing fast, we, we said, okay, let's go for that, and it's also, let's say, uh, more powerful in some stuff than Blender, especially in that period, or faster in, even working with that. And, of course, we also had some freelancers, 2D animators, motion graphers, and um, 2D effects artists that are working uh, at home and they decide the software. No? They, they said, okay, um, my workflow is with After Effects or my workflow is with uh, uh, 
TV paying or Tumboon or whatever. So they are just delivering the material to us um, and they work on that uh, softwares. And then here are my balls, uh, my favorite object, <laughs> my favorite object to, uh, to show Seder, which is not really visible, right? But at least this, this is the simplification of our Seder. We have the shadow, the light, and two rim lights in this production, which uh, was a bit different of the uh, Petson that I saw before. Um, and you see, um, we start the production thinking that we can uh, produce 100% in EV, because the Petson TV series we did in EV, it was 4K and it was a big success. It was super easy. Uh, render time, it was residual, it was really basic. It was the outline produced by, by freestyle, taking most of the time of the, of the rendering. And then we did some uh, stress test with 100 objects, you can count it if you want. Uh, so we put there an object representative of the series, the gun, and then we put uh, in each gun different material with 4K texture on it, so it's like a stress test, but uh, suddenly artifacts came to the, <laughs> to the um, real test on the production, so producing some shots, some kind of, let's say, more elaborated, complex uh, stuff. I think I steal that image from internet, just in case you find it. I, I didn't draw it. Um, so, but who was giving us the, who was um, putting the flag and the saying warning, be careful. It was Pablo Basquet because we called the Blender Foundation through uh, Blend, uh, Pablo Basquet to ask, hey guys, we are struggling with some problems uh, on EV with, uh, in this production and we don't know how to solve it. Do you have some ideas, blah, blah, blah. And then after a couple of meetings, he said, you know what? It's really cool if you wanna do it in EV and of course you can produce it, but the schedule is like this. <laughs> compressed, you have um, so many people working on that and you are producing so many friends, liars, blah, 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 which is uh, super complex and huge for the use of EV. It's not like before. So my recommendation, and if you want to use, and that's because I wrote before, like with limitations EV, my recommendation is going to cycles, which take kind of the benefits of EV in speed because it's not not as slow it's super fast nowadays with the nvidia the noisers uh, you know these things um you can go super fast also but still you have the possibility to produce render passes or whatever is the trick with real light um realistic um some kind of um, effects in some sequences or whatever you need especially inputs for the compositing department uh, you can do it with cycles. So the only thing that we were using a lot in, in EV, um, not the only thing, but one of the things that we were using a lot in SADIN in EV was the SADER 2 sRGB, which is present in EV but not in cycles, at, at least in that period. And then it was not, as I said, it, it was not working well or not working basically in cycles. So we, we kind of replaced it with the two SADIN nodes in, in cycles and so the whole tv series and this is as i said it's a development from several years it's not only a few months the whole tv series were done with only one shader which is this one and we have a variation why we have this variation because we thought so the the director defined the eyes of the tv series like two different styles these guys, these anime uh, manga style guys are in two walls, the, the real wall and the virtual reality video game wall. So the director said, let's get two different kind of uh, eyes style. And that's because we have a variation. And um, we could do it in texturing with just a texture, but we said, hey guys, let's go for something more fancy and then we did everything 100% procedural. So, and here, just to finish the talk, um, I have a video that I record playing around with uh, the Seder. 
And in this case, it was not Antonio developing the shader. It was, uh, oh, it, uh, yeah, it's been done, or it was done by uh, Daniel Perez. And just to explain it a little bit, because it could be really complex, it has four columns. The first column is like the surfacing shading column, where uh, you can place there your notes, ramps, whatever you want, texture, and and then you have the shading attributes to, um, that you can just play with uh, to define the final look of that asset. It can be a character or whatever, uh, a chair on the background, a gun. And then you have um, multiple attributes that are maybe not easy to read from, from the presentation, but you have even a blood mask to connect with some kind of uh, masking that you have. Um, so there you see, Basically, it's not super complex in terms of texture this production. It has base color and sometimes some other things. Like in this case, we have the emission, like a mask. And in another objects, we have um, translucency, transparency, alpha, whatever, specularity, not so much. But And then if we enter in the general settings, um, oval, circle, node group there, we have some stuff to change. Uh, to influence the shader to do the final look. So it can be even connected in the future with the rigging for the animators and so on. But in this case, it's to define the, the, um, the look depth of the character. And you already see there uh, some settings on coloring, the base color and the emission, and then some attributes there that, that you have the specularity, um, some mm, many different um, sliders that you can uh, modify. And something that I can point off on is like this stylized node, which is passing from zero to one with all, with all the different ranges uh, inside, no? Uh, to be 100% stylized, so let's say more in the flat direction, in the 2D direction. And if you put it in zero, it's a, a standard, say, there in cycle. So you can already, and that's a super powerful tool that we have now, uh, you can already work with this shader in multiple productions in that range of super 3D and super flat. And then we have the next column, which is the animation column. And this is not a column for the animators. It's a column for the riggers to connect attributes that should be uh, for the animators present, like some texture variation of the characters that we can uh, for example, we have a character there with seven different suits, color, and then uh, all of them were set up in the same, <coughs> same say there, same rigging, same asset. And then um, the last column in production is the lighting. The other one in the right, I just uh, will mention it, is like the brain, this one that is super complex there. And then the lighting uh, area, it has some visibility to make the work a little bit more comfortable. Uh, so, because sometimes the rim light that is inside in is bothering for the lighting. So you just uh, would like to see the, say the pure or the color pure effect by the, the light. And then you have some, um, some controls for the rim light where you can define, okay, I, I would like to switch off one. I, I would like to multiply. Uh, several times the other one to make it stronger. I can change the color. And this is independently of the um, look depth which was defined. Is This is in the one of the final stages in lighting where we can play with. So based on the color script and maybe some direction from, direct, from the director, we have um, that kind of possibility. So you already see that we are playing with the Fresnel to produce this kind of right, uh, rim light. and it has this mask that is visible if you put this attribute in one, which is, let's say the white is letting the rim light be invisible and the black is not visible. So because we have two rim light is, uh, you know, uh, the opposite way in the, in the other uh, parallel opposite uh, rim light. So, and one of the coolest thing that this uh, shader has is that we have also the ambient occlusion masking. And this is super important because when you don't have the ambient occlusion or something occluding, or let's say um, 
telling the rim light, don't draw it well. So you have rim light everywhere. And what it means is that in the interior of the mouth, in the interior of the nose or whatever it is, that rim light is being present. So we, we create also this amino occlusion uh, masking to say, okay, in that areas or uh, the, uh, yeah, these areas where the geometry is super close one to the other, let's occlude it, let's just avoid the, the rim light. And the same with the, the other side. Uh, and, and something to mention here is like on the left side is the um, Blender viewport in 3D. So it's not, it's not like layers in Photoshop where you just switch on and off. This is actually a 3D scene that you can rotate and play with uh, by the man as you want. You see? And this is playing in real time. It cycles. And my computer is not a super uh, expensive uh, computer. It's kind of a standard with a good graphic card. And then this is cycles in real time. It's so fast that you may uh, think that may be ECB. And then, um, yeah, I just enter on the brain of the Seder where we have nodes, node groups, multiple node groups, more connection, more wires, uh, it's super crazy. And, and if we go to the eye shader, so we have the same shader, but we have that node group that I just enter, and we have that simplification of the nodes, which is really visual, where you, you can see on the top of the image the regular eye, and on the bottom the cybernetic, cybernetic um, eye. And there we have, again, more nodes, let me put it again. If I'm entering on the brain of this seder, chan, chan, chan. <laughs> Look at this. It's like my room sometimes. <laughs> so I, it's looking like messy, but, but no, it's uh, super tight. And uh, there, after we publish just the attributes that are uh, really useful in the production, so you can see that everything, every single part of the eye, as I said, is 100% procedural, can be modified with some attributes, rotation, translation, uh, scale, um, coloring, whatever that you can imagine here is being able uh, on the eyes. As you can see, we can move the different dots. Um, and also even those little things are things procedurally done with masks and operations and it's really crazy this guy <laughs> so but and we have also the color um of course the color setup of each uh, each eye both together but we have also a way to separate them um and we can play with the hue and separation value which is really simple and um so and the other one that we can switch in the animation node, we have an attribute, <coughs> sorry, in the lighting node, we have an attribute that it says I mix, which if we put in zero, let me put it on light, if we put in zero, it's switching to the normal eyes. So it's not the crazy virtual reality video game eye, it's the standard regular eye. And then we have again, another node group full of stuff, but simple in some way with the slider, color pickers, uh, and so on to modify it by demand as, as you want. So, and just to finish, uh, that dot that I'm moving now is not a white dot with outline. It's a mask that is not letting the color of the eye passing by. So it's really cool that we can play with that and it, it was one of the requirements of the director, and here it is. So, and that's all. Bedank, thank you very much. And it's doing like this, like. Uh, it's not 100% symmetrical, the image, so. 
But um, so, two questions are super simple. The first question, and then I kind of stop on the presentation to remember it. I almost forgot it. Is uh, B Water Studios is in Germany, in Köln, Cologne, and Montreal on hold. But in Spain, we are in two cities. We are in uh, Barcelona and what's the other city? Sorry, he said. Sorry? Canary Island. Very good. And the last one. The last one. Uh, that one costs 20 euros. This is 250. <laughs> so we have two rim lights. And I, I mentioned that the rim light is being produced everywhere, blah, 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 blah. So uh, which kind of property we use to mask the rim light on the interiors? Who said I'm a I will give to him. It's a bit tricky because some other guys put their hand up. But. <laughs> and that's all. I hope you enjoy. Thank you very much.